We were about two weeks out from departure for this, for hopefully for a good chunk of this year. Yeah, at least a few, several months. Yeah, and we're just, we're just, you know, crossing off some things on our list for to do for the cabin, getting the RV set up, all that good stuff. But something that's on our list that this is, this is the first. And I'm a little bit nervous and I'm also excited. I'm hopeful that <laughs> yeah. nothing is found, but we have a gentleman coming to inspect the cabin and the RV for mold. for mold and any environmental toxins that could be affecting my health. My health primarily. Because. Oh, because I'm exhausted. <laughs> because, yeah. Recently, uh, my doctor ran a whole bunch of tests and found that there is several different molds in my system. Because why not? Because why not add that to the mix of everything else that's wrong with me? If you've got mold uh, toxicity in your system, it's really hard to, to recover from any of the other issues that you might have. So we're getting the house checked, we're getting the RV checked because I would like to know that the environment that we are in is safe, whether it be on the road or when we come here to like take a health break, I want yeah. to make sure it's healthy. And what kind of prompted us a little bit is when we were out in that brand new 28 RL mm -hmm. for a couple of weeks, you felt a little better. I did feel slightly better. Like my energy levels improved slightly. Could have been a coincidence. Enough but... to where I, I mentioned it. Like, mm -hmm. hmm, I haven't had to rest as much. I'm very nervous because if he finds something in the RV or the cabin, or, or both is going to suck. That's going Something to cost got nowhere to live. What I like about this company, A Healthier Home, is that he's just the inspector. He doesn't then try to sell and services, upgrade yeah. services to remove That'd or remediate. Con conflict of interest. Yeah. And so he's just going to check everything out. They go under the house. They go in the crawl space. They check out the HVAC system and the vents. And I don't know what else. So we're going to, I'm not sure what he's going to do for the RV because yeah. I don't think he's done many RVs. So this is going to be new for him too. So it's kind of exciting, but we'll share with you guys what we find, good, bad, or ugly. Hopefully it's good. Yeah. Hopefully eliminates that as an issue or yeah. a potential issue. Yeah. So okay. we'll see. My arm's killing me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> He really did a full inspection on the inside and the outside and was at our place for about six hours. He also crawled underneath our cabin and also checked out our RV. He found some issues that we had to fix ourselves like cleaning the crawl space and ductwork and removing mold from an antique dresser. Luckily, our RV came up as pretty clear or low levels of any off-gassing and toxic fumes, which was a relief. Start with a device that you could use again and again and again. Okay. Yeah. Other, other places. Just yeah. a general air quality monitor. Yes. Yeah. It's nice to, to begin to see some what's really going on here. And what you could see with this one is mm -hmm. temperature, humidity, formaldehyde, total mm -hmm. VOCs. So this doesn't know if it's chemical or microbial, mm -hmm. but the total VOCs, um, carbon dioxide, uh, and then particulates, some particulates that are um, a little bit larger mm -hmm. particulates versus a little bit smaller particulates, PM 2.5. I guess, is it in a constant state of changing? Always. Okay. So I thought I would just show you real quick how we get the motorcycle loaded here at the cabin when we want to get it loaded the day before or a few days early. We're not actually leaving for several days, but there's rain in the forecast. So I want to go and get the motorcycle loaded up. You know, the RV is normally way back here. So I gotta pull it forward to be able to get the bike around and inside the garage. However, we're on a little bit of a slant down here. So what I've gotta do is get off the hitch a little bit. Let me show you what I mean. So this is very similar to what we do on overnights where we need to level and we can't be level on the truck. And you see, I've got quite a bit of an angle here, but all I do is come off the hitch this way just a couple of inches so I can get the pin out leave the truck right where it is that way it's lined up already and when I'm done I can just lower it back down back the truck up a few inches and hitch right back up you can see at this angle I definitely would not want the RV down hitching because this would hit this I got to raise the nose up to get the tail down we're looking pretty good there I should be able to get that in no problem All right, we've got about four days until we hit the road. And my job right now is to organize our attic. And I thought it might be a good opportunity just to show you what we store in the attic. 
And by the attic, I'm talking about that bunk area right there. Now that we have a door that we can close, we can store whatever we want up there. So let me show you what we're starting with. I've got it all cleaned out. We have a steam vac or steam mop, an extra monitor base. Over here, we've got our vacuum hose for our central vac and our pickleball rackets. The idea here, since obviously this thing has one point of access, is to put the things up there that we're not gonna need for a while, like luggage. I can go all the way back over there. But some things, like the dog food, our media archive, and the space heater, and a couple of things for cameras, we're gonna want at the front. So I'm gonna pack all of this stuff in there, and then I'll show you what we end up with. I think we got plenty of room for all of it. You see our suitcases are packed back there. Box of miscellaneous stuff. These things are uh, insulative barriers that go into the skylights if we ever need those in the winter or summer. But I can get to all of this pretty easily with just this ladder. And we still got quite a bit of room up here. And it's all light stuff. Almost all this is just all super, super light. Daisy, you cold? You shivering? Or are you just nervous? Have I told you that I'm a little nervous since we haven't taken the 410 out in a bit? Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm wondering how rusty I am, so I'm trying to pay really close attention to everything. Yeah. Doing my checklist twice. Yeah. Santa. I'm not nervous about you. I don't want you to think that. It should be. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> Full check. We're doing a little walk around, but he walked around too fast. So, here he is. Got to do a little look-see. <laughs> I'm in your shadow. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Oh, it's got a little weird dry throat thing going. You nervous? A little bit. I am too. It's you been know? a few months since we've been kind of stationary at the cabin for all my health stuff. And the holidays, we did take that little trip in the reflection that you've already seen, but it's been a while since we've taken the 410 out, so. And we're going out indefinitely. We don't know when we're coming back. We just wanted to pop in here really quick and answer some of the questions and comments we got on our previous videos where we were traveling in that Reflection 28RL. Some of you commented online and have speculated that we were traveling in that RV because of some kind of frame problem with our 410. And that is absolutely not the case. We have absolutely no frame issues in this RV, nor did we have any in our 397. The only reason that we were traveling in that RV was because of our road. If you didn't see our video where we got stuck on our gravel road coming up to our cabin, that's the reason. We just didn't want to be taking this ginormous RV down that road or mainly back up it until we had some road issues fixed. Also, we just wanted to try something different. It was kind of fun. If you're curious about our opinion on the whole frame flex issue, we'll have a link in the description down below. So be sure to check that out. It's February and it's cold and you might think we're going to Florida. No. <laughs> we're doing the opposite. Yeah, we're going to Ohio to see family. So it's a happy, yes. it's a and happy then, boo. Then our plan is to head southwest, not Florida this time. And we're going to go to hit up some of the coastal towns in Texas. Mm -hmm and then hill country and then continue west looking forward to it i haven't been out west since oh you know, you. yeah <laughs> we haven't been out west in so long really looking forward to it what i'm nervous about is of course getting down our road getting down the road shouldn't be as bad as it was getting up this road yeah, yeah, and we still haven't figured out what to do about the road so when we come home we've got a whole nother game plan that we'll yeah. fill you in on at that time whenever that is but i think i'm rambling because i'm nervous about getting on the road hey let's roll Woohoo! Yeah. It's okay, puppy. Travel the world together, babe. Travel the world together. Travel the world together, babe. Travel the world together. Up in the mountains. Down by the seaside. Doesn't really matter. Long as I'm
So we've got this slide locked down. So now we will push out this slide on the driver's, I'm sorry, the passenger side. It's nice now that we got that door up there. There we go. Daisy's got a funny leg. <laughs> a little pom pom foot. <laughs> In one quarter mile, arrive at Country Boy Brewery HH on the right. HH. That's better because it's flat. Damn it, I don't know about putting our sign out. I, got, I think I have some cones I can put out. do it. I think it's called a paraglider, oh, yeah, paraglider. It's, but it's motorized. So I don't know what it's called. What is that called? Paraglider, <laughs> but it's a, a motorized. I think it's got a name. We are at a new harvest house. This is Country Boy Brewing. You can see the brewery is right there. RV right there. This is Georgetown, Kentucky, just outside of Lexington. We could have done the trip all in one day, but it would have been a really long day and be trying to back in at nighttime and stuff, so no good. Negative. So instead, we're going to spend Valentine's Day. Did we say today is Valentine's Day? <laughs> I, I took her to a brewery. He took me traveling and to a brewery. Not too, not too shabby. Hope you but, like it. Thanks. We're going to go in there and check out the menu so I don't have to cook. So it is a nice little Valentine's yeah. Day treat. Just put in a food order and Chad's gonna sit and have a beer and relax after a long day of driving. And I'm gonna try to clear off the bed without putting the slide out <laughs> and keep the puppy company because she's probably sad. There's the girl, there's my baby. There you go. See, I didn't leave you for very long. Yes. I got a breakfast burger. Oh yeah, buddy. I got a salad. Oh yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, baby. Their uh, hazy IPA is really good, so I got a four pack. Defy tradition. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna eat too, Daisy? They're eating. We're a little concerned about this being a little bit of a busy road and our slide being out. So I put those down there. I mean, if they hit those, that's gone. But I think it's, it's a really, really wide street. So I think we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing at I you. My, my closet's here <laughs> and I go <laughs> as far as I can get. I'm gonna put the slide out. Just temporarily? Yeah, you're gonna go for a ride. I would love to report that we woke up real well rested. <laughs> I did, he did. I did. He did. I didn't. Not because of the harvest host. <laughs> Apparently, I was really sleepy, and he I had slept. A good night's sleep. I slept super, super deep with lots of uh, uh, noises. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but and it was also just a little awkward, you know, with the slide in and. Just, it's fine. Yeah. I sound like I'm really complaining, but whatever. It, it was it great walking right across the yes. yard to a brewery to get a beer and, a, and some it's dinner. It's a dinner, and, and, it, and it, this is a very good, easy harvest host, and it was quiet. The road the road was really quiet all night long until, you know, this morning when traffic started coming in. We were a little bit leery of leaving our slides out on the driver's side yeah. because that side faces the street, even though it's a very seldomly traveled street. The cars that do go on there go pretty fast. And there were a lot of cars in the evening, quite a few, a lot more than I expected on a road like this. So yeah. it just, it bothered me thinking about it being dark out and no real reflectors on the slide and somebody maybe just not paying attention. And maybe they left the brewery and had too many drinks and shouldn't be driving and yeah. who knows. This was a great, easy overnight stay with food and beer. It's awesome. 
Yeah. me to get out though right or are you just gonna go for it chad i'm just gonna go behind right. me, but... i'm gonna jump out real fast can you hear me scott yeah okay you want me to watch in front chad no okay Yep, you're doing, you're right on target. The wheels are still in the gravel. You want me to watch the truck? No, I'm good. Okay, you are a little bit in the grass, but just try to get out of the grass. Just keep During our time in Ohio, we had some unseasonably warm days where even the crawdads came out, which was weird. Don't go into the light. Because it's Ohio, we had some absolutely frigid days as well with ice and snow. Welcome to Ohio in February. This is where Tara looks like Captain Pike. Who's Captain Pike? <laughs> we'll put Captain Pike on the screen from the original Star Trek. So this is Tara's little portable sauna. It's, it's like, like it's, a sauna. It's like a sauna. Oh, my, my slipper just came off. I got, stuck, I got stuck on your sauna. RV life. RV life, baby. This is how you do a sauna in an RV. Okay. Captain Pike was uh, the captain of the Enterprise. Take it easy. Take it <laughs> and this is like, you know, the year 2500 or something. It's in the future. Well, listen, there's a, there's a point to this story. <laughs> It's snowy and stuff. It's dumb. <laughs> <Look. laughs> That's a lot of snow. Yeah. There's an RV show at the Dayton Convention Center this weekend. My poor mama is sick. And so we've been here for a couple of days and we can't see her yet because she's hacking up a lung and she's been sick for a bit. She's got whatever that is going around. So we're just kind of keeping our distance a little bit for a while until she gets a little bit better. But we are going to go pick up my brother and his fiance, Tiffany, and we're going to drag them around the RV show. Although we didn't do much while we were in Ohio, mostly we just spent time with family and Chad spent some time getting work done on the RV. Today, I got a new toy to try out. Did I say toy? I meant tool. Got a new tool to check out. <laughs> We've had our uh, Vi Air pump for many years now. We love our Vi Air pump. It's very quick at getting up to high pressures. If you're not familiar, a lot of these RVs that are big like ours require 120 PSI, which you just can't get like a gas station or anything. So you have to carry your own pump. Plus who wants to go to a gas station when you're starting a travel day? You want to be able to air up your tires yourself. Here at my buddy Chris's, and he has one of these guys right here, which is a DeWalt air pump. So I bought one because it says it can go up to 160 PSI, but anything over 100 PSI does have a 10 minute run cycle. So I'm not sure how long it'll take to shut off and back on but I like that I can just set the, the pressure and walk away and it should air up. So we're gonna see how well this thing does with higher pressures. These front tires are 90, so that'll be a good little first test and then we'll do a couple of the RV tires. And if they don't need it, I'll just let some air out, we'll try it. This is T24, by the way, we're getting ready to travel tomorrow. So this is part of our process. I do think I'm gonna need, if I do end up keeping this, um, I'm gonna need a little chuck adapter that I can just clip on versus the screw on it. Let's give this thing a try. So you can see I turn it on here and then I'm gonna dial this up to 90. I like that it's a dial, not like a push button that you gotta hold down. So let's set that to 90 PSI. Oh, it comes up with a little gauge here, so. Here, let me show you. It's saying, okay, we're already 86.5. Let me see if that matches the TPMS. The TPMS is what we use to uh, check all of our pressures. And let's see, we're uh, front left. Yep, 86 is what I got on the TPMS. So that matches up just fine. Let's press go on this thing and see what happens.
we'll let the TPMS catch up and see what it says. And I'm gonna continue to do the rest of the tires and see if this thing can do the whole truck without running out of juice or overheating or whatever. I got 90 on the front, 80 on all four rears. So let's just go get those precise. As far as using it or prepping it for use, this is so much easier. I mean, the Vier, I gotta pop the hood of the trunk. I gotta hook it up to the batteries. It just takes a lot more just to get set up to do this job. Okay, let me dial this down to 80. What's awesome is I can just walk away and it stops. I love it. Just keep going here. And by the way, I just checked the left front tire. Boom, right at 90, so that's good. So far, I really love the process. If it can do the RV tires, this will be our new go-to. By the way, if you're wondering what we use here for our valve extenders and TPMS and stuff, we'll have links to all that in the description down below. So this will be the real test to see if it can do 120 PSI on these tires. So I'm curious about something. If I dial this back down to 115, hit press play or go, it's a play button actually. I wonder if it will let air out. No, okay. So you have to do that manually. That'd be cool if it let air out. That'd be awesome. But let's keep going and see if we can get all six trailer tires at 120 without this thing crapping out on us. I think that if we were going to be airing up a brand new tire or something, or if we were way low, I would probably have to break out the value air. So we're keeping that for sure, assuming this does everything we want. Let's go. So this is a winner for sure. I did all 12 tires without stopping. Every time I heard it stop, I came back and moved to the next tire. So it did great. I mean, these three were a little bit lower than on the other side. So it took a little longer. So this thing is a champ. I don't, uh, I don't feel any heat or anything on it. It did a great job. This is going to be our primary T24 before travel air compressor. Boom! Winner. I did notice that the battery on this is down to one, and this is a five amp hour battery. I think it's their largest battery. It's one of their larger ones at least. So you do wanna make sure you keep this charged. So I'm gonna charge this before I store this back in the truck. Cause it's good to have, you know, for an emergency. Obviously I could, you know, plug it in and charge it anytime. To do all 12 tires took maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes, uh, you know, stopping and starting going to each tire. Uh, but it did eat up an entire five amp hour battery. I think we're ready to roll. Per usual, time was too short with family and I had way too much work to do. What? Yeah, you didn't spend enough time with family. I know, but suspension's kind of important. Yeah. <laughs> we are now headed to Memphis via a harvest host. We're going to go see Graceland. <laughs> you got to see it once, right? So we've got two days to get there. The weather is looking a little sketch where our harvest host is located in Portland, Tennessee for winds. So yeah. I'm going to keep an eye on them today. It's forecast to be like 20 mile an hour winds, but with 40 plus mile an hour gusts. Yeah, we start feeling those. We're just pulling over somewhere. We'll do what we have to do. When you let your love run free Honey, you can count on me With you in the passenger seat We can drive all night to Tennessee Welcome to Tennessee Turn right on Old Tennessee 52 Then take the first right
arriving at Summercrest Winery, on the left. It's a matter high or low, with you in the passenger seat, right by your side. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So we've got a little crazy issue going on. Yeah, so we got here and we noticed that our underbelly lights were on red, even though we hit the all off button before we left. And you can see it is off. And if I turn them on, they change to a different color. If I turn them off, they go to red. We need to figure this out because when we get to an RV park, we will be the obnoxious ones with the constantly changing underbelly lights. Well, like changing. it's they're a not, disco park. They're not changing. They say the same color. Oh. Just when I turn them off and on, uh, instead of turning off. Well, regardless, regardless, <laughs> regardless, having the red underbelly lights is not going to be probably looked upon favorably by our neighbors. Well, I can, if I turn them on, I can change the color, but I can't change it to blue. I'm going to try pulling power from the main control board and see if it resets everything. Try it. Well, I gotta, you want to do gotta, that before or after we go and check out the winery? After. Okay. We're at our overnight between Ohio and Memphis at mm -hmm. Sumner Crest Winery. Good job. I remembered it. I remember my lines. <laughs> you didn't have lines. I didn't know what, I forgot. I thought it was called Summer Hill. Summer Hill, Sumner, Sumner, Qua Sumner. See, no, I, can't, I can't do it more than once. We're gonna walk over and take a look and see what they've got over there. Tiffany over here at the winery has been great with communication. Oh yeah. As far as where to park and which sites have power and water and, mm -hmm. and all that. And she also was great with texting us and saying, hey, get off the exit before what your GPS is probably telling you to get off because yeah. there's major construction going on yeah. on I-65. So we did that and everything was great. Yeah, yeah, we got off um, two exits north in Kentucky. on exit two in Kentucky because this yeah. is right across the border into Tennessee. Yes. We are in site one. We pulled through this way because this is the way Chad wanted to come in. But if you want to use the utilities that they have available, you would pull in the other way because there's the water. It's a and, big loop, so yeah. you, know, you can go in either way. It's 20 bucks for the night if you want to use their power and water, which we don't need to. So that's why we pulled in this way. Oh, check that out. Oh, that is cool. Pimento All cheese. the chicken salad, pimento cheese is made in house. Oh, nice. I, ooh, white wine chicken salad. That sounds delicious. When you fall. This place just keeps going back here, doesn't it? Oh, wow, look at this. This one is Summer Queen. Yeah, it's refreshing. 